Hi, I'm Greg Columbus. My guest at this time is Andrew C. McCarthy, former federal prosecutor. He's now a contributing editor at National Review Online. He's also a columnist there, and he is a Fox News Channel contributor. He recently wrote an opinion piece for foxnews.com talking about what he believes is the less than ideal reasoning behind Nancy Pelosi's call for a 9-11 style commission on coronavirus. And Andy, thanks very much for being with us. Greg, it's my pleasure. Well, as you write in the column, one of the things that uh, official people in Washington love to do is put together blue ribbon commissions. Now, how much these things actually accomplish, I guess, varies from commission to commission, but a lot of times it's uh, more of the image of accomplishing something than actually getting things done. But uh, Nancy Pelosi's uh, explanation for this has, has shifted a little bit. Uh, on one hand, that she wants a 9-11 style commission to review whether the president is responsible, but out of the other corner of her mouth, she's saying it's not a critique of the president. So what's the reality here? Well, the reality is kind of like impeachment. She didn't want to impeach until she did. Uh, so you know, this is the same sort of thing. This is obviously, you know, from a common sense perspective, Greg, nobody in their right mind would do a commission kind of exercise, even if you were favorable toward these, as I'm not, but if, let's say you were, um, you wouldn't do it while the crisis was underway. Uh, nobody thought we should do a 9-11 commission while the government uh, in those days and weeks after the 9-11 attacks, the intelligence we had at the time indicated that it might be just the first wave of attacks. And then even when that proved not to be the case, we still had to ramp up for uh, military operations and other responsive government actions. Nobody wanted to have a 9-11 commission. Even the people who love the 9-11 commission didn't think we should have it while all that was going on. These commissions are something that you're supposed to do if you do them at all uh, as a look back at how we could have done things better. And of course, because Washington runs them, they become uh, finger pointing exercises and highly politicized, but nobody in their right mind should want to do one while we're dealing with this crisis right now. You know, she wants to get this up and running and there's some urgency to it because the election is coming up in November. If Trump loses the election in November, you'll never hear another word about a 9-11 commission for coronavirus. You know, it's a political ploy. And I don't think it's actually going to go anywhere uh, because as a practical matter, I don't think you could put together a 9-11 commission for coronavirus at this point if you wanted to, unless we were going to do it by Zoom, um, <laughs> which is unlikely. So, you know, I think it's a lot of uh, political chatter. And it's, uh, look, in some ways, I don't want to say you have to feel for the Democrats because that would be dishonest. Um, but you do have to understand that they feel, I think, even the, even the people on Capitol Hill feel that they're relegated to the sidelines now because the whole ball game in terms of, of our politics and our public safety and all of the uh, oxygen in the room is now concentrated on Trump and his daily briefings. We're all you know, looking very carefully at the numbers, seeing if the social distancing and other precautionary measures seem to be working and, to, and thinking about what do we need to do to get the country up and running again. There's not a lot of place for the kind of partisan politics that you would expect to see in an election year. So I imagine they're a little bit frustrated, but that's not a good reason to, you know, to do something stupid. Another person on the House Democratic side who is playing a key role here, as you point out again in the column, is Jim Clyburn, the South Carolina Democrat, who uh, was kind of a kingmaker for Joe Biden in his presidential campaign. Uh, he's also famous for saying, leading up to the most recent relief bill, uh, this is a tremendous opportunity to restructure things to fit our vision. And in the original Pelosi version of that bill, we basically had a Democratic legislative laundry list, a lot of which didn't necessarily have any direct tie to the emergency relief that was needed economically. So can we cut to the final page here and basically say that this is going to end up suggesting that we need to pass a lot of things that the Democrats have wanted to pass for a long time? Yeah, of course. And, uh, you know, never let a crisis go to waste. Uh, a crisis with this kind of 
price tag to it, which is only a down payment, evidently, right? This is, we're, we're just into the first $2 trillion. That's before the next $2 trillion, right? The, uh, I hope that they've replaced the batteries in that uh, printing press they have down there. <laughs> But yeah, of course. But, you know, I, I think, Greg, that this also shows to the extent these two issues are mingled together, why it would be so inappropriate to do something like a 9-11 commission. You know, the 9-11 commission is remembered with a certain fondness today, especially uh, in Washington. Uh, those of us who were covering it closely when it happened remember it as, uh, you know, basically a partisan food fight, uh, which is what it was for uh, most of the time. And the legacy of it is that it created these gargantuan new bureaucracies, um, which the jury is very much out on whether they actually further the purpose that they were uh, established for. I, I think they don't. Given the fact that the 9-11 Commission had something of a breather between the time that the the 9-11 crisis ended and the time the commission began, which was a few years later, the commission was a highly, highly politicized exercise. And the fact that you have, you know, Pelosi and Schiff and uh, Clyburn and, you know, these characters who are, you know, pushing their political agenda in the relief bill and now calling for a 9-11 commission, I think that ought to suggest to people powerfully that this is much more a political exercise than anything that will serve the public interest. Well, as you point out, Andy, a lot of times these uh, commissions don't result in much anyway. 9-11 Commission, both uh, blame the Bush administration and the Clinton administration, but uh, really went kind of generically on the intelligence community. So, so both sides got to, to save some face. And so a lot of times, uh, despite all the hype, we don't get a lot out of these things. But uh, make some people in Washington feel good, which uh, <laughs> I guess isn't the first time that's happened. <laughs> right. Well, we, we want them to feel good, Greg. I, I mean, guess it's important. Hope you're staying well, and uh, we'll talk to you down the road. We'll see if this thing actually gets off the ground. Thanks so much, Greg. Andy McCarthy, former federal prosecutor. He is also a National Review Online contributing editor and columnist and a Fox News Channel contributor. I'm Greg Corumbus reporting for Radio America. Mm-hmm.